If part of the function or the job of a slave woman was to reproduce, then that meant that her children or her babies were also enslaved. Mm -hmm. And that would be true in the North as well as the South. Correct. Yeah. So when we think about reproduction, we think about a woman reproducing property for the benefit of her owner. I think that's what this document that we're looking at illustrates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, um, this is a female child called Charlotte and another um, boy child named Benjamin and uh, the master here is saying that he is uh, claiming this child according to law. So the birth certificate was really not to necessarily mark the birth of the child and all of the sanctity and sacredness that that might entail for the mother. But what it was really about was the fact that by law, these children were property and these men owned them. Right, so they're not birth certificates so no, much. They're as certificates they're of ownership. Of ownership, yeah, exactly. And this one I notice, you know, it says, you know, that I, John Murray, a merchant of New York City, certify that a certain female child called Charlotte was born. So he's really documenting the fact that he owns this female child. Right. And then he tells us the name of her mother, of my mulatto woman slave named Sibylla. So there's no indication here of the father of the child. That doesn't matter no, at all. Not there's at all. No. Another thing that's really very interesting about this, um, if you notice, Charlotte, uh, her mother is identified as a mulatto woman slave. And Benjamin, the, the boy child here, his mother is identified as a Negro woman slave named Mary, indicating that it didn't matter whether you were light-skinned or dark-skinned. Uh, presumably, the mulatto woman was, uh, a light, was lighter skinned than the Negro woman. Um, if you had one drop of black blood, you were considered not just a person of color, you were considered a Negro. And it really did, there was no differentiation of status. So Charlotte is born a slave, as well as Benjamin. We actually have a photograph uh, that we can look at of a family, a Negro family, in which some of the children look completely White. white and so yes. and what what's also interesting though here is that clearly these owners are staking a claim to children which will be good under New York law until the girl child turns 25 or and the boy child turns 28, 28. correct so yeah. that's uh, almost and a lifetime in those days and if the girl child, in fact, had a child while she was in this sort of liminal state of slavery, then her child would also be a slave. So that when people talk about slavery being eliminated in uh, the North or New York in any of the Northern states, as long as they had a gradual emancipation law, you could have slaves all the way up to the Civil War. It is a stark reminder to us that women produced babies for the market. For the market. Instead of for love or what a shame. Well, they produced, they produced the children for their masters for the market. You know, her relationship to that child was a totally different story. We can presume that um, the compassion and, and, and passion that went into having a child and the bonds of motherhood uh, were strong. Um, of course, they could be broken at any time, uh, which is what uh, these certificates testify to. Yeah, and which make a mockery of the idea of motherhood. As it was developing at exactly this time, 
among white women. Correct. So. Yes. And we have to remember that this was part of black women's work. Yes. 